The image on the left is running Borderlands 3 at 1440p at 24 frames per second. The image on the right is running the same scene in Borderlands 3 on the same PC at 40 frames per second because it's using Microsoft's new Auto SR, Automatic Super Resolution. And in some ways, this is very similar to NVIDIA's DLSS technology. This is an AI-based super resolution upscaling technology for use in games to make your game run faster uh, by rendering at a lower internal rendering resolution and then using the magic of AI to uh, make the output image look more like your monitor's actual native rendering resolution. So what we're seeing here on the left-hand side is, again, the game running at an actual 1440p, and on the PC it's running on, it can only handle 24 frames per second. But this image on the right, uh, the game itself is actually only rendering at 720p. That is not just half the resolution, because 720 is half of 1440, but that's half on one axis and half on the other. That is one fourth of the actual number of pixels that it originally had to work with. This is an extremely aggressive upscale. And by running the game at such a lower rendering resolution, it takes a ton of burden off of the GPU, the graphics processing unit, and allows it to render frames quicker so you get more frames per second. The game then, uh, you know, is running better. But again, with only one quarter of the pixels, you would expect it to look a lot worse. And that's where the magic of the AI trained upscaling algorithm comes in. And in uh, the still screenshots here, I think you guys would agree that it actually looks pretty great in this side by side. However, that's where we're gonna start getting into a lot of the caveats here. And one of them is side by side still images are a best case scenario for upscaling algorithms. Most of them look very good in a still screenshot, but have a lot more trouble in motion. That's an idea that we'll come back to in a second. Also, the particular game here, this art style being very cartoony, I think may or may not uh, be uh, helping out. Uh, the, the, it might, might be an easy upscale uh, to take a look at. But anyway, that's what's going on here. Now, while this is very similar to NVIDIA's DLSS technology, uh, in that, again, it's rendering the game at a lower internal rendering resolution using an AI-based uh, upscaling algorithm to make the output image look better. Uh, it has some pretty major differences in how it actually operates because NVIDIA's DLSS runs on the GPU itself where it has part of its hardware set, or, set aside for tensor cores which are executing that uh, DLSS algorithm. That is not quite how AutoSR works. AutoSR is running on an NPU, a neural processing unit, uh, which is uh, gonna be a big deal on, <laughs> on Microsoft's big push towards Copilot Plus PCs. Now, the interesting thing I, I see with that is like, take a look at this, because here, we're seeing that the image on the left is the game running at 720p and it has 36 frames per second. And the image on the right is the game running, well, at 36 frames per second again. But it looks a lot better because it's running the auto SR upscaling algorithm. And I think you guys would agree that the one on the right does look a lot sharper, does seem to have more detail, but it's running at exactly the same frame rate. Now that's actually different than what would happen with something like DLSS. Because DLSS, let's say you're running uh, a game at uh, maybe your monitor is 1080p. If your monitor is at 1080p and you use DLSS quality, it's rendering the game at 720p internally and then using the upscaling algorithm running on the tensor cores to output what should hopefully look like a 1080p output image. Now, it doesn't usually end up looking perfect, especially at those lower monitor resolutions. However, it also doesn't perform quite the same as exactly running the game at 720p. So rendering the game at 720p and upscaling it with DLSS takes an additional frame time cost because it's having to run the upscaling algorithm versus just rendering the game at 720p. They would not be running at exactly the same frame rate, but that's what we're seeing here. These are running at exactly the same frame rate because the GPU isn't doing the upscaling algorithm. It's being done on the neural processing unit. However, 
I think that's actually causing what looks to me like the biggest downside to auto super resolution. If you need the processing of, of the frame to run through the NPU before it gets back to the GPU, I guess, to finally display, that sounds like that'll take more time, meaning we could introduce latency. And so uh, I was reading this blog post in a lot of detail, and one of the main things I was looking for was latency. And if you search for latency in this article, we do have confirmation that this does introduce latency. It says, while running our large model, auto super resolution introduces a single frame of latency on average, as it uses AI to significantly boost your game's visuals. In our testing, this is Microsoft talking, most players didn't notice this delay, and when they did, the sharper graphics and faster frame rates more than made up for it, enhancing the overall gaming experience. Okay, so that's a big thing, because, uh, you know, we've seen a similar issue with frame generation technologies, and to be clear, frame generation is not the same thing as super resolution. Super resolution is rendering the game at a lower internal resolution to make the, it easier on your GPU to render more frames, and then trying to make the output image look close to the, what the uh, monitor resolution would actually be. However, frame generation is actually taking two frames and kind of interpolating, guessing what's in between, and showing that, which uh, you have to slightly delay showing a frame that otherwise would have been ready to display because it's being used for part of that interpolation. When NVIDIA launched DLSS 3, there was a lot of discussion about the, the, the added latency. And uh, I think in NVIDIA's uh, posts like kind of what we're seeing here, but for DLSS 3, NVIDIA was claiming it was about half a frame of additional latency. And uh, Microsoft here, talking about the super resolution te technology, is talking about a, a, a single, like, frame, a full frame of additional latency. That's more significant. So um, uh, with that being said, I, I, I think that this could still end up being a way people would prefer to play games because people often do the same thing with uh, frame generation. A lot of people are okay with the trade-off of adding latency to increase motion fluidity. Because the two reasons why you traditionally want a higher frame rate in a game are motion fluidity, things look smoother when they move on the screen because you have more frames of information being displayed, and increased responsiveness. When you like click to shoot, the shot happens quicker. The, the game registers that quicker. And running frame generation technologies get you more motion fluidity, but uh, you know don't improve the latency and could po possibly have a small latency hit. It's looking like this has that same issue, where it increases the motion fluidity, but does not improve the responsiveness, and this actually looks like it makes responsiveness worse by up to a whole frame, uh, or on average a frame. Now that sounds actually like a potentially significant downside, also because the lower your frame rate, the more milliseconds of latency that is, because the longer it takes you to render a frame, uh, the more latency uh, you're adding. So it seems like it has the downsides of frame generation, uh, even though it's not a frame generation technology, which is kind of interesting, because normally DLSS and FSR increase your frame rate and increase your responsiveness uh, at, a, at a possible hit to image quality because you're rendering it at the, at the lower resolution. In general, though, this technology does not look to be competing directly with FSR and DLSS because uh, even in Microsoft's own announcement post about this, they're actually saying that in next generation games, meaning new games under development, auto SR should not be the focus. They're talking about direct SR. Now don't confuse auto SR with direct SR. Direct SR is an API for game developers to easily implement FSR, DLSS, and XCSS upscaling technologies um, by unifying the inputs and outputs into a single API. So it makes it easy to integrate those into games. So Microsoft is saying that new games should be focusing on direct SR. So what is auto SR for? Auto SR does not need to be directly integrated into a game the way DLSS does or XCSS does or the way that um, uh, even FSR does. It doesn't need to be directly integrated into the game. So auto SR, they're saying this enhances existing games that don't have those, other, you know, uh, you couldn't use those other upscaling technologies. 
And they're also calling it auto SR. What is the auto about? It's, it's for doing this automatically. So uh, they have a, a, another post here talking about that there are currently 11 games uh, that are uh, available right here, if you wanna take a look, that will default to enabling auto SR. So what does that mean? What does it mean when it defaults to being on? Which you, by the way, you could turn off in your uh, system display graphic settings. Well, it would default to basically when you start up the game, it actually changes your desktop resolution to a lower resolution and then uses auto SR to upscale it, thus boosting frame rate. And, and it would do so automatically unless you turn it off in those supported games. You can enable it uh, to where it won't be automatic, but you can enable it manually by, by changing these settings in, in pretty much any game. They say it's compatible with most DX11 or DX12 games. Uh, and you can enable it manually. Now, if you don't want it to adjust the entire desktop resolution, then you can set it to on, but keep current desktop resolution, but then you have to manually adjust the desktop, re uh, sorry, adjust the game resolution yourself, and you have to adjust it to a compatible resolution with auto SR, because it seems like currently the uh, model that they've trained this upscaling for operates on inputs between 700 and 900 lines of vertical resolution. So you have to have the game running between 700p and 900p. Uh, that's all it's compatible with. And then I guess it can output to any amount 1080p or greater. Well, I'm not sure about any amount, but they do say 1080p or greater, and they do at least show those 1440p screenshots and 1080p screenshots. So basically the input resolution has to be between 700p and 900p and you output to 1080p or greater. So those are, that's certainly more restrictive than FSR and DLSS, for example, on the types of resolution inputs that it's able to take. Um, also, currently, this probably won't run on your PC, but that could expand in, uh, to much wider uh, support in the near future. Currently, uh, this is gonna launch with Copilot Plus PCs with a Snapdragon X series processor with Hexagon NPU and an integrated GPU. So basically this is running on the new Copilot Plus PCs and to get that branding, you have to have a NPU, a neural processing unit of sufficient power to get that branding. The first ones to market are gonna be the Snapdragon X ARM series processors, which is really interesting because I'm, I'm very curious how gaming on Windows on ARM is gonna actually turn out, um, if that's gonna end up being a big deal. Now, uh, that's what it supports currently. However, Microsoft has been asked about this and they've responded that as more PCs uh, get uh, you know, Copilot Plus support, you will be seeing uh, you know, Lunar Lake from Intel, we'll be seeing AMD coming with its new line of APUs uh, with the NPUs built in. Uh, and those should be updated to support this technology as well. They're just not supported initially. So overall, I think that this seems pretty interesting. The other, uh, you know, big, uh, you know, downside to it running outside of the game itself, it not requiring the uh, direct integration into games, because again, again, if it's directly integrated into a game by the developers, DLSS, FSR, XESS, things like that are probably the way to go. Um, Auto SR again doesn't require that. But that leads to one of the other issues. Let's talk one last little bit about what I think about the image quality. Because these still screenshots are looking pretty good. However, the art style of Borderlands 3 is very, you know, painterly, if that makes sense, right? Um, and because this is not directly integrated into the game, Auto SR doesn't have access to things like motion vectors. Uh, in other words, like as far as what inputs it has to work with, it's much more similar to FSR 1, not FSR 2 or 3, FSR 1, where it was uh, effectively a spatial upscaler. That's the kind of inputs that it's working with. Now, FSR 1 wasn't an AI trained algorithm, and so perhaps the AI trained algorithm is able to add in more detail than, than something that wasn't AI based would be able to do. So we have yet to see. However, one of the issues with FSR, you know, spatial upscaling, uh, FSR1, was when you run it at a pretty aggressive setting like we're doing here, going from 720p to 1440p, 
uh, one of the issues is it would start to almost look like, a lot of people would describe it as almost like a watercolor painting where you kind of, it's kind of rounding out and the edges and things like that. It almost looks painted. Um, which is kind of interesting because they're showing it off in a game with that kind of art style where maybe that type of issue with the upscale would be less noticeable. So I'm not saying that's for sure going to be the case, but they're definitely showing it off in Borderlands 3, which has that particular art style, which makes me a little bit hesitant. The other big issue, like I said, is without access to motion vectors from the game, I'm curious how good it's able to look uh, in, in a temporal stability standpoint, like how, how much temporal flicker and stability issues are we going to see? Or because we're taking that whole one frame of latency, are they somehow using the previous frame and the next frame, so like, like trying to get some type of um, uh, temporal data out of that by introducing that latency? I don't know. So I do have some questions about the overall um, quality of the upscale. So in general, I think this is really cool. And I'm actually very excited to see Microsoft getting into this space. I think it would be really cool if we had just like eventually a directly integrated super resolution technology that could be part of DX or something like that, that's maybe based on this, that was more uh, platform agnostic than something like DLSS's, which has to have their branded GPUs. So I'm really curious where this type of technology goes. I'm also very curious how those, uh, you know, gaming on ARM on Windows uh, is gonna go. If you wanna look into more details on all of this, feel free to follow the link in the video description to this blog post from, uh, from Microsoft talking about all of this. But just keep in mind, this is a post from Microsoft themselves. So they're obviously gonna be talking this up quite a bit uh, rather than this being, you know, independent third-party testing. I'm curious what you guys think about all of this. Uh, definitely let me know in the comments section. And huge thank you to viewers, commenters, subscribers, uh, channel members who click the join button to directly support the channel financially. That is a huge help. A huge thank you to everybody who can do that. Totally understand not everybody's in a financial place to do so, which is totally fine. You get, uh, you do get like little membership badges on your comments and I'll start getting more um, uh, members behind the scenes content and things like that out on the channel over the summer here. Uh, anyway, uh, I hope all of you have an excellent day. Where's my unrecord button? There it is.